We're, we're only going to be going until six tonight. So uh, what I wanted to go over today was was basically two things. So the first is kind of, uh, you know, upcoming meetings. Just want to get those scheduled and kind of talk about our timeline for a little bit. And then I just wanted to start the, you know, just kind of like a cursory review of these uh, capital requests that are in. Okay. So if all of you could pull up your, your calendars, uh, we have... Uh, quite the uh, the schedules to work around. So uh, I actually, in my haste to get over here, I forgot to bring um, the list of all of our uh, calendar conflicts here, but uh, <laughs> we, we have we have we have quite a few. So uh, timeline wise, we really need to get all of our um, our work done by around March 31st uh, in order to make it in time for the current town meeting date. Now, if things get extended, that's great for everybody else, but you know, we still need to get ours done so we can get in front of the select board and the finance committee. So um, what I want to shoot for is, you know, having <clears throat> all of our recommendations in place, you know, kind of towards the beginning or middle of March, and then kind of have all of those ranked so then we can present our capital plan to the finance committee um, by March 31st-ish. So to that end, um, what I'd like to do is try and find um, tonight, like, you know, a, a couple of meeting times. I think we're probably going to need about six to eight of these. But, you know, if we can start with two or three tonight, I think that would be good. Um, my availability next week is going to be kind of tight. But um, if everyone could kind of look at their calendars, I guess, for the week of the 27th of February, 27th through the 3rd. Um, just want to see if we can find something for one of those dates. Um, I think, um, Denise, you have the, what is it, the first Monday for planning board? Yes, March that, right? is off. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, March 1st is an off Wednesday for select board. And oh, I, it is. yeah, and I do not believe there's anything already scheduled for that night oh actually i think we'd be finance looking um yeah actually i gotta pull a finance schedule that's finance be. finance meeting is meeting on the 28th at 5 30 on tuesday the 28th i have a 6 30 on the 27th the 3 50th but we could meet earlier yeah, on monday right. 27th Yep, that works. I've seen your housing on the seventh. I mean, on the at seven o'clock on the on the second. So we could meet again. We could meet Thursday nights before you know at five or five thirty. Mm -hmm. I could be done by seven. Yeah, most most Thursdays actually work well for me too. How about next Thursday? Does that work for you? Yeah, um, I might even oh next Thursday will not. Second. But I can I can be available on the second if that works for everyone. Anyone have I'll be oh you'll for me. I'll oh you you'll be away. Okay. Yeah. On the second. Yep. Well, even if we can't, I mean, we're missing two people here tonight, so or one person. I thought Kevin one. was coming, but maybe something happened. Yeah. Um, all right. And then uh, I think Carolyn, you said you've got something on the twenty seventh on Monday, the twenty seventh. I have a, a six thirty um, three fiftieth. So if we met at five or five thirty, that's fine. I can do five on on the twenty seventh. Okay. All right. Let's let's do five o'clock on the twenty seventh. Five to six thirty or six fifteen. Yep. That work? Yeah. Okay. And. Um, then you want to try to do March 9th? Uh, let me see here. Oh, March 2nd. What was the second? Thursday. No, was that a problem for someone? Um, that was, yeah. I'm, has a yeah, problem. I'm out. Yeah, I'm actually in Boston for that day. Okay. Um, and then tied up. Yeah. But if worst right. comes to worst, as long as we get four people here. Yeah, we can at least get, you know, because uh, the process is kind of long, you know, just reviewing all the recommendations. So if we can get two in for this week, you know, um, okay. we can get you caught up to speed after. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Is it everyone available at 530 on the second? Yep. Mm -hmm. Five o'clock is too early. Yeah, five o'clock okay. is kind of cutting, okay. cutting it close. I can do it every once in a while, but yeah, just put 
five thirty down for the second. And then that takes us then to the week of March sixth, and we've got the Frontier and Deerfield budget meetings on the seventh and the ninth. Yeah. the assessors meeting on the seventh. And the select board has a meeting on the eighth. On the so. eighth. Uh, and then planning board probably has a meeting on the 6th, they right? Do. <clears throat> yeah. But what time? Um, what time is the planning board on the 6th? Is it 6 or 7? 6.30. We're sorry. We compromised. We're doing 6.30 meetings now. Okay. You want to okay. do, try a 5? Um, yeah, I can I can try and do like another uh, another 5 on or 6. I mean, even if we're doing 5.30. Um, Which day? On the 6th. On the 6th. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, does Six, five thirty? Yeah, because I'll be there in person anyway. Okay. Yeah, let's do five thirty to six thirty then. Yeah. Well, five yeah. or five thirty on the six. Five thirty yeah. on the six. Okay. Well, we'll have to start. We'll have to end right before six thirty because that's exactly when our meeting starts. So. Not a problem. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I think <clears throat> that would probably be the only time we'll be able to meet. <laughs> Pardon me. That week. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then that takes us to the week of March 13th. And then on the 13th, I have a meeting, um, but I'm I'm open the 14th, 15th, and 16th, I believe. That's an right. off camera meeting week, so we could do it sometime. Yeah, we could mm -hmm. do it Wednesday, because I'm assuming the finance and the assessors would have a meeting on the 14th. So, I mean. Uh, the no, the 21st, 7th and the 21st. Oh, actually, oh, okay. no. Yeah, so the 14th, yeah, 14th yeah. and 15th, I, I can make work. Okay. Yeah, um, I guess let's let's shoot for the 14th then, uh, 5.30, if that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I don't know if we can- What time on 5.30? 5.30, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. And then uh, can, can everyone go the go longer than 6.30 on that day? If we try to go from like 5.30 to- 6.30 or 7. I can, yeah. I can be there till midnight. How's All that? Right, so Don't say that. Denise wants to knock out the rest of it then. Yeah, yeah, let's just do it. All so, right. Well, two hour, two hour meetings are long enough. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to try to do the, do you want to try to do the 16th? So we have two meetings that week too? Uh, that would be great if we can try and fit the 16th in. I could do same time. Uh, 530. 530. Yep. As long as we're done by seven, that would be fine. All right. Wow. So 530 to seven for that. <clears throat> what have you got at seven? Uh, senior housing. I have senior housing every Thursday at seven. All right. Well, Denise is going to have us knock everything out on the 14th. So the 16th, go. we should be. He's going to stay here and finish up. We need, we yeah, we do need show. snacks. We, we want snacks. That is pie day, so we could try and bring pie. <laughs> Skim's in charge of that. I heard he makes a great pie. Right, Skip? I can't see Skip, Casey. Okay, so you're, you're blocking There's me. no one around that can wait. Because my it. head's in the way. I need to see his facial expressions. All right, and then um, you don't have to yeah. just going to look at the next month. Let's stop there and see if we can't. Uh... Hi, Ken. All right. Well, yeah, I think the next meeting maybe uh, that we have, we can we can go a little further out, but that, that gets us that gets us a bunch. So that's good. So, Ken, I don't know whether you caught these meetings. So I, I got the last one. <laughs> February 27th, 5 o'clock. OK. March 2nd. 530. 530. Yeah. The 6th, 5 o'clock. 530. 530 on the second. 27 5. 530 on the second, you said? Yep. Uh, yes. On the sixth. On the and second, then, yeah. And oh, then the sixth. Yep. yep. That one's five. gonna be short, Ken. You got you got that 530 or five? I have it down as five on the sixth. I have 530. Okay, 530. Yep. And then the 14th and the 16th, Ken, at yep. 530. Both at 5.30. Okay. Sorry to be late. That's okay. 
I had to wait for a Zoom update. I don't know why. I just did a Zoom meeting myself two days ago, and <laughs> I just did it too. <laughs> I've had a I've had a bunch at work too. Ay ay ay. And I've got an old computer that's on Windows 8, so. <laughs> oh, that's pretty far back. Mine was that's on pretty 8. old. Yeah. I know, yeah. they get cranky. When they're yes, they do. Yeah. And Microsoft, you know, notifies you they no longer support it, so. Well, they didn't support it before anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know the difference. So, okay. Hi. I All right. hopefully can so, make those. Yep. So somehow we actually have a, a, a slightly lighter load this year. Uh, we have 15 capital requests, I think. Um, and that, that may change. We might, I, I think we, we always get a couple of towards the end, but uh, slightly, slightly better load than we had last year. Um, I think, uh, you know, reviewing the sheet, it looks like in, in capital requests, we're looking at about $2.3 million worth. Chicken feed, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, we've got some we've got some here that, you know, we might have, have a little bit of a hard time. Not that it's our committee's responsibility to find funding, but I mean, as a town, we'll probably have a little bit of a hard time finding funding for some of these. Um, but uh, yeah, I figured what we could do is start looking at the first couple here and see who uh, we want to bring in. Um, so uh, if, if all of you could open up your packets, uh, the first capital request that we had in the packet was for the, assuming that all these are entered in the same order. Um, the first one I think that we had was the Deerfield Elementary Front Entry Asphalt and Walkways. Um, so Ken, do you know if this is something that we'll need to get Darius in for, or is that something you might be able uh, to speak to? I just, um... Hang on, I gotta find my notes from the other night. I believe right now that the uh, front entryway will be put off for a year while we wait to find out if there's any grant funding or other funds available. I think that's uh, what- we, we put a letter of intent right. in yeah. for the um, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, uh, but honestly, uh, right. we don't know what the outcome's gonna be at this point. Correct. Um, what I did was I took the liberty of sending um, this <clears throat> this list off to Shelly and Darius, and they said yes, leave it in this way for now. And we're hoping they're hoping to get a grant, or we're hoping to find some funds somewhere to complete that project. It needs to be done, and we're trying to find out if we can get approval for rain gardens and and some other stuff to really um, improve that front entryway quite a bit so oh so, okay so i think it needs to stay there for now mark all right so <laughs> now that i look at my notes <laughs> all right so so keep it here if we can find a grant and if not is that something that we look at in 2025 it, most likely yes well, it's, we'll getting, look. it's getting increasingly look. what's that will it last that's the question okay. i mean it's it's so, increasingly hazardous <laughs> And it is a fairly high traffic area, as you can well imagine. The Trevor, you're saying no, it won't last? It, it's a safety I, concern. We have a, okay. some areas. Uh, right. Kevin and the guys have come over, but we've had all around that building, we've had, you know, wheelchair accessibility issues, to say the least. And we've right. got to address that as soon as we can. Um, and we it's just, not just safety, it's liability. Right. And we just did some emergency repairs out outside the gymnasium and in the driveway traffic area there, um, which was never intended to be a, an entryway, but became one when we put in the new loop road, so. <laughs> yeah, that's where everyone goes for sports now, yeah. So I think we need to leave it in for now and we'll um, see what we get for further clarification in the, the month ahead. Okay. Um, all right, and then moving on to the next one, we've got the Deerfield Elementary School Air Conditioning Phase 2. Yes. And last year we had a $45,000 request in and somehow it escaped my attention or it, it came through as something like $16,000. Um, we went ahead and did the $45,000 worth of work to start Phase 1. 
And okay. uh, this would be the second phase in an ongoing process to finish off um, air conditioning, the classrooms in the school. Uh, when we originally built the school, we didn't have as much need for air conditioning as we do now. Well, there were only two of us that voted for air conditioning, if you remember. I do. <laughs> and, right. and, we, and we air conditioned only the core so that the uh, year-round staff would be made comfortable. But go ahead, Denise. Are those mini splits that you're putting yes. in for air conditioning? Okay. Yes. Yeah. These are primarily air uh, mini split systems, yes. Are we getting anything through Mass Safe? Can um, school buildings get? I, I can't. I can't answer that. I don't know the specifics. I I can ask that and um, okay. just we'll yeah, just curious because they got a huge program for many splits. Right. Yeah, they do. And we yeah. have um, a, we have a guy in town that uh, really cuts. You used to cut very good deals on mini splits, for, especially for the town. Um, and I could. Uh, see that he makes certain to, to quote whenever we get around to it. So is this amount for 45,000, um, the phase two amount or the amount for phases one and two? No, that's the phase two amount. Phase one is all taken care of. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So um, would it be safe to say that the front entry way is more of a priority than the air conditioning. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, I don't think that's a fair comparison. One is liability and safety, but you know, with these high heat days, it becomes a safety issue. And kids can't okay. function when the heat goes <laughs> up so high. There's we're not prioritizing now anyway. We're just going through right. no, prioritizing later. To kind of get some sort of a feel for right. I understand what you're you're asking, Skip. Um, you know, I I would hesitate to put a a um, personally would hesitate to put the priority um, ranking on them. Yes, I agree. I would let the, the uh, school decide if it if it comes to one or the other. Well, that's why I was asking a school committee member. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but I need a recommendation from administration and from our facilities director. So, and I, I don't have an answer to that specific question, Skip. Okay. All right. And then uh, the next thing that we have here is the, the Frontier Tennis Courts. It looks like uh, this one was already voted on for um, a, uh, a four town capital committee, um, but still needs to go to ours. Right. So, Look at this, it looks like 100,000 total or 100,000 total in Deerfield's cut would be approximately 49K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any any details on, on that, Ken? Um, no, just that the project uh, is proceeding forward. I think, didn't they apply for some CPA funds as well on this? I don't actually know. CPA doesn't always tell me what they've got for applications. I think right. they might have, but I'm not positive. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm thinking there might be some CPA request in there. So I'll check on that. So what happens if Deerfield does not approve this? Um, um, we have to end up paying if the other other three schools agree to pay for it. The other three towns, if they, if they do it, we have to pay to. I'm yeah, not the sure how that, there, there is a piece there that, mm -hmm. So that may be something you'd want to check on. I think it works the same way as the budget. It's a majority vote of the four towns have to pay. Um, All right. It's just, it, that's what I mean. It's just yeah. like the budget, if, if I remember correctly. Um, that's my understanding. Okay, so next one here is the purchase of Cumberland Farms. Uh, this is exciting. Finally happening, huh? Or potentially? Uh, we would have to take it by imminent domain. Uh, they have not oh, been responsive. Well, oh, but we still have to pay for it, Carol, and that's why it's in there. And I looked at. The, oh no, no, I I, I understand. Yeah. We have to pay a, a. We have to get an appraisal, and we have to pay fair market value. The whole thing. But. So I just threw three hundred in there because the um, 
the assessment is just below 300. So for purposes of discussion. Yep. All right. So we, we have we have made inquiries. And We've been trying gotten... to get them to donate it to us. We've been trying to do all kinds of things with them. And they just, uh, Cumberland Farms was bought out by a British UK company and uh, they have not been responsive. Okay. If anybody has an in, we would like to talk to somebody. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember this being a thing last year. <laughs> I guess I got excited too quickly. I thought that maybe we, uh, we finally got through to them, but all right, it is what it is. Uh, okay, and then, um, yeah, we've got the online permitting and licensing system next. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone here would be able to speak to that, but, you know, perhaps we can. What I was going to do is I was going to ask Amy to come in and talk about it because she did most of the research. She's the assistant in the building inspection slash inspections department. She did a lot of that research, and as she was starting, she's new. So as she was starting her experiences with the amount of work and time it takes really educated me when she started doing that research. I think we could save a significant amount of money if we get this in place. And she explains that if you read through the request. Yeah. But if you wanted to talk to her, I already told her I thought we might need to get her in here. So you guys can hear it. Um, the complicating thing on this is that the public health grant that um, we are part of with Greenfield, Montague, Sunderland, and Deerfield are um, is going to buy Board of Health software under the grant. The grant will pay for it. So I don't know how this is going to integrate because we're going through Right now, we're just, you know, going over the different softwares that are available. So I don't know how this is going to work. Well, I think everybody needs to understand that the permitting includes planning and zoning. And frankly, we're so far behind, we can't, we need to catch up. And so we also are subject to procurement. I don't know what this is going to look like in terms of procurement. So that's, and I did ask her about that last week and she was going to check and see if um, the company that she likes, it's actually the more expensive one. Um, I think maybe on one of the state bid lists, but she was going to check for me. So we need a little bit more detail, but either way, we've got to decide whether this is going to be a priority. And then there would be a cost in the contracted services budget for the maintenance, for the regular annual maintenance, which I think she mentioned. Okay, all right. Um, next one looks like uh, town records archiving. I refresh this. Really, we need to start this process, especially if we're gonna move buildings because we don't have the space to store all these records. So there is an op there is opportunity on the state bid list to get somebody to do this work. I know it may get kicked out, but I wanted everybody to understand that even if we move, mm -hmm. even if we redo the 1888 building, we do not have space for those records. We have got to start archiving no matter what, because a lot of the records are permanent, but they don't need to be held in the paper space paper state anymore. So that's what we're talking about is- Archiving is separate stuff. from permitting, yeah. Okay. Do we don't, ever get to a, taking a picture of it and putting it at some point? Essentially, okay. but also having making it searchable, that's why you work with a company because you make it searchable and you don't start with the oldest records. You start yeah. with your searchable platform and then use the electronic records you've received and start organizing that way and go backwards. That's why you see it spread. So what, and then what would we do with the records once they are searchable on an online basis or something? So we preserve them that way. The ones that we need to preserve um, in paper, we would keep as much as we can, but the idea is move to electronic format because it's actually easier. To keep. And, and then get rid of whatever we've made. To. As long as we're allowed to do that, there are some we might not be able to. Some of them are truly permanent. Oh. I assume some of them tend to be historic too. Yes. And I don't know what. Yes. Like building documents, for instance, 
anything that has to do with a property um, is a permanent record and has to be maintained. Whether you have it electronically or in paper, it still has to be. So we then would, we need to find some place to put this permanently. We need to find, it. I think we, the only way we can do this and actually Julie and Denise and I talked about it. Um, the only way that we can manage the space is if we start doing this electronic archiving. Mm -hmm. And then that we can give a place for that to live. We can make a space for that. Um, but the actual paper, whatever has to be kept in paper, we have to reduce our paper records too, because we just don't have the space for this. It depends on what happens with the 1888 building, this, excuse me, this building. Um, because if we kept this building for certain use, we might be able to leave some of the records here. Then again, we might not. It really depends. It's sort of up in the air. But functionally, if no matter what we do, we do have to start this archiving process. Denise? Oh, Denise. Thank you. Go ahead. I, mean, I agree with Casey. I went through because um, Julie wanted me, you know, I volunteered to go through and talk to everybody at Town Hall, and I spent an entire day talking to every single person in town hall about records. And I think, you know, when I, when I went into finance, Carl, Carlene, she's done a great job with a lot of, you know, organizing um, records. When I went into the assessor's office, um, that needs a lot of help, a lot of help. There's a closet there that has just so much stuff in it. And I think a lot of that can probably be shredded. I know a lot of it needs to be kept. You know, I, I spoke with, um, I forget her name, it's terrible. Karen. Yeah, <laughs> but, but at any rate, you know, if if we're decide, you know, at some point we're moving over to the 1888 building, there's no point in taking a bunch of records that don't need to be there. Plus in the, um, the outside in the container out there, oh my God, there are at least, I forget how many, how many boxes of stuff and folders oh, yeah. that really need to be gone through. That's why conversion makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I, yeah, I vote for that. <laughs> so um, oh, yes, for Casey and Denise, do, do either of you know whether or not we get Freedom of Information Act requests for any of the paper uh, stuff? Oh, yeah. absolutely. So all the time. <laughs> I bet it could probably help out with that as well. Oh, it yeah. is. It would help yeah. immensely because if we could start to store some of these records online, you can just point people to the website. Mm -hmm. um, it's a question of the framework of the things we convert. Yep. But we do try to store a lot of it now because projects, we throw project information up on the website so people can look. But it's a lot, we do get a lot of um, public records requests. Do we ever get um, a breakdown of you know, I, I know Alex has done them in the past, or you know, maybe just to justify some of these costs a little bit more of like how much time town administrators are processing Freedom of Information Act requests. It's both town clerk, town administrator, the basically the department heads. When we get a public records request, we forward them out to the department heads. Um, sometimes you can see that in how much time we give for an estimate mm -hmm. when we reply because there's a point where you have to acknowledge the request, reply if you have, if it's a pretty significant one, you have to do some research, give them an estimate, and then they can pay you. There's a process they can do. Yep. Um, and then <clears throat> we provide the documentation within a certain period of time. So for us, it can be anywhere from 30 hours to 100 hours, depending on what it is. Um, and it's at the, the cost in terms of personnel time isn't necessarily reflective of what it actually takes in manpower because we're only, or person power, we're only allowed to charge the limit of the person in the office that can fulfill the request. So it doesn't take into account a lot of the time that I spend and Chris spends in our rates. Mm -hmm. It just, it gives you a framework for the number of hours you can expect depending on how comprehensive it is. I can give you a little bit of background, but. Okay, yeah, I was just curious. It's a, yeah. All right, um, and then, uh, yeah, moving on to Public Works. Looks like we have uh, a couple of requests coming in here. Um, I see one for, 
think there was a plow. Yeah, there's the uh, the F three fifty, the Freightliner dump truck, and the other one, uh, the John Deere loader. Okay, um, these are all part of um, Kevin Scarborough's plan. I'm, I'm not sure how far out those go, but perhaps what we can do is just have uh, Kevin come in for a night and yep. talk about where we stand with the plan and all that fun stuff. And so that Freightliner truck replacement was conditionally approved last year so that we can get the order in. Yep. Um, we would now yeah. have to find out for it. Okay. So I will touch base with. So has that truck. vehicle been ordered based on? Yeah. Okay. So we don't really have a choice there. That, that one. We were we were trying to strategize some no. of this, but yeah, that one we really need to pay attention to. But you've got four major requests from them, and I asked Kevin to get me some information because he had a proposal years ago that he told me about that I think we should revisit, and that was capital purchasing, so capital borrowing like Frontier has. Um, it actually evens out some of your purchasing costs and gives you sort of the the framework to add equipment in and then pay for it over a period of time. And then it drops off and you add other pieces um, as you go along. I was trying to find the um, information guideline on it. I'm still looking. So I'll talk to him about that again. And he, I did ask him to give us the schedule of replacement because I don't think those of us here have it anymore. He had submitted this years ago. Yeah. And I, I don't think we have it. So I asked him just as a refresher. He hasn't gotten it to me yet, though. Okay. Yeah, because we, we should probably not only look at the stuff that's up for this year, but start putting this into our five-year plan as well and then right. adjust it. That's why I want it, is I want to see what's what's pending. Well, he can update it because you know it's wicked out of date based on um availability, you know. I mean, we're talking two years to three years in some of this equipment um, yeah. before you can get it. And then also the prices are just out of whack now compared to what- That was may come before. down, but cross your fingers. Compared <clears throat> well, to what it was. Compared to what it was when he gave us that schedule, because that schedule is at least three years old. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think it's that older was, than that. So you're right. Yeah, um, well, well, it was pre-pandemic. So, you know, pre-COVID. Because I remember sitting in a meeting, you know, all of us agreeing that Kevin had done, you know, like a 15-year thing. Yes. And that was great. But I'm, you know, it needs to be updated. Actually, I think it went for 20 years. It did. Yeah. It went, for, it went for a pretty long time, but the 20 years out got to be kind of wonky i would say it's solid for 15 years or so the 10 or 15 year range. That, you don't know what piece of equipment is going to change in 15 years so i mean right. you, you do know that the piece you've got is likely to wear out at 15 but you don't know what you're going to do for as far as replacing it and right you won't know it, so. that's why I, you know we were looking five, at it was five 15 years year. yeah 10 or 15 years was it was good to see his projections but I, I think they're way out of whack compared to what the current situation is. We've got more updated numbers in these requests. So that's the good news. The bad news is we don't have we don't have the next four years built out. So that's why I want a, a refresher from him on his schedule. Yep. No, I agree. I, I think we all have to get updated on based on just what the current situation is. Yep. Okay. Just a quick question. You had mentioned, I think, for the Freightliner was conditionally approved? It was conditionally approved because we didn't fund it. What that meant was yeah. the select board and capital approved, and finance was aware of all of this, approved moving ahead with that purchase. In other words, committing by ordering and then revisiting it in terms of funding this year because we knew it was going to take at least a year to get the piece of equipment. Okay. Because it's my understanding that <clears throat> it's we were going to order it knowing yeah. that knowing that we be, might not pay, be able to may not be able to take it, which means they'll find somebody else to buy it. Right. Just, yeah. They're not going to have a shortage of people looking for this. Yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you. That's right. So yeah, after we get past all of that uh, 
equipment purchase stuff. Um, that takes us to the North Main Street sidewalk engineering. So let me explain real quick. This isn't okay. actually, this is sort of a collaborative project. You also, you also got a dump body in there. Yeah, there. so the sander and dump body is actually, and Kevin can explain it, but yeah. there's a truck that they hadn't gotten a new sander and dump body for. Now they need to because it's become a safety issue. Um, so this wasn't actually in all of their schedule. I don't think, but I don't have it in front of me. Um, he can come in and explain that, but the way he explained it to me is we've got to replace this for this one truck because yeah, it was it very, very lost in its explanation. Yeah, so it, it's a safety thing for them to be able to use the piece, the, the truck that you would put the sander and dump body on. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. The engineering piece. So we have a grant for a project on North Main Street that we got last year, but with some complications going on for a couple of other sort of associated projects, we hadn't been able to start it. And it was to actually do sidewalks up one the other side of North Main Street from where they currently are towards the park property that we were planning on, you know, that the mm -hmm. town's been working on. Um, I wanted you guys to see this. Kevin and I had talked about it. So we had a grant for preliminary engineering to do the grant application. We need money to actually finish the engineering. Do we own the land? No, we own well, we own the right of way. We would put the sidewalks in on the right of way, okay. but we would also have um crossing areas, and that was the key piece. So Kevin and I were talking about it. Could we leave this in for now? There may be we may be sure. able to make an adjustment with the grant people where I haven't called them yet because Kevin and I had to talk about it. So put a put a hold on that one, but don't take it out, at yep. least for now. Would this would this be primarily to service the intended park? It would in terms of the sidewalk, but the actual crossings, there's three crossings, Ken. Right. It would replace it would replace the crossing at Frontier. It yep. would create another crossing not too far along past there. And then it would create a crossing down where the park property is. Um, but it would also include flashing lights. So really, it, it's a combination of a traffic slowing measure and a safety, a, sure. a crossing safety issue. So what we, I need to talk to the grant people because if if it's going to be difficult, considering how slowed down we've been on the North Main Street project, the park project, it may be more worthwhile to focus on the crosswalks and the and the lighting first, and then circle back around. So if, what I wanted to do is talk to the grant folks and see if we could make an adjustment in the grant and at least get those things done because mm -hmm. I think it would serve the community to slow traffic down up there. Okay. If I, if I just may to bring it to the committee's attention or this committee's attention, and I mentioned it to Trevor earlier today, the, the North End of Old Main Street and Old Deerfield on the west side from the Deerfield Inn up to the end of the street is, is nothing but a liability issue. <laughs> it's pretty horrific. If anybody wants to go up there and try and walk it, uh, you, you would see what I mean. Um, so I think that's something that the town at some point in time needs to consider. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Unfortunately, that can't originate with this committee, but yeah, I know. Could bring it in, you know, we, we'd be able to do something about it. Okay. Yeah. I will uh, send a note off to Kevin and ask him what he, what he thinks. <clears throat> so that's the reason I ask is if we're not going to be, you know, if we're not going to be doing the park and it's not urgent to get the sidewalks in, although the crosswalks, I agree, are, are important, especially in front of Frontier. Um, this is a, you know, it's an area of town that visitors come to, uh, admittedly 25 or 30,000, not hundreds of thousands, but regular visitors, regular foot traffic from students um, that attend the local schools. And um, just, I walk up there pretty regularly and, and I think Carolyn's up there fairly regularly, or at least in the, in the house up there on occasion, and you see the foot traffic. I mean, there's a regular procession of people that walk up there, and the sidewalk's in really bad shape. So, 
Yeah. I, I walk up there with my dog from time to time. So mm -hmm. right there with you. So, okay. <clears throat> so sorry Thanks, to digress. <laughs> oh, no. no. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, so the next thing that we have here is the capital ambulance um, for 375. So well, I just want to explain this is a little complicated. Yep. You know, uh, SCEMS puts aside money for, you know, the South County EMS puts aside money to purchase this, um, the ambulance ahead of time. Our cost estimates were based on 250,000. And um, so the money is there, but if we went to go purchase it, it was short, uh, 110,000 based on what the price of ambulances jumped from 250 to the latest is 375. And there is a you know two to three year wait list on that. So what happened is um, the South County EMS voted, uh, well, back up a little bit, our cardi cardiac monitor replacements had um, almost nearly doubled in expense and they are eight years into a 10 year lifespan. So far they're all working, but one could just stop working at any point. And then we become um, not an ALS service, you know, a, an advanced life support service. We just come become a basic ambulance. So it affects our revenues. But also, obviously, we can't save anybody. So, um, and this, and and there is an eighteen month to thirty month wait list. It's been fluctuating, but the earliest you can purchase this is eighteen months. And now, I mean, I think it's up to thirty months. So, what we did as a SCEMS oversight board, it was vote to use the money that we had set aside for the ambulance, which was already short. Uh, to purchase the $150,000 three cardiac monitor replacements. So the money has not been spent because obviously we're just in the, a wait list, but we did vote to, to move 150,000 of the 250 um, towards the purchasing of the monitor and try to figure out how we're gonna fund the, the ambulance at some point. So um, it seemed like the most important thing to do was, the, I mean, the only thing that we have to make a decision on is the 7,000 IV medication pumps that need to be replaced. The ambulance, we still have to figure out how we're, how we're gonna bill and, and allocate funding for you know, capital replacement on that. All right. Easy. Um, I have a comment about the 7,000. That doesn't fall within capital, Carolyn. That should be an operational expense. I know, but we wanted to let you know that we were going to take it out of capital, probably. You're going to take it out of retained earnings? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. As opposed to putting it in the budget? As opposed to using the budget? Well, you know. You would have Kevin do that. I know we, we've done it a couple of times where he's been forced to take things that weren't we're right at that threshold or right below that threshold um, out of other by funding. By the time we were going to pay for them, we don't know what the costs were. All these costs are jumping like 20, 30, 50% or more. So this was the cost at the, you know, when we were doing the estimate of replacement in this year. If it jumps up, we're covered. If it doesn't, I'm sure then we can just vote to pay for it. Okay. Okay. Is there? I don't think it belongs in the capital schedule. Well, I, the reason I said but that. Because of the no, I can understand because of the complexity of the issues, all three of the issues here. Mm -hmm. Can we address these at the next meeting and yeah. and have? Uh, well, let me scans. see when we can when yeah. when yes. we can get the chief in. Yeah, I I I just wanted to explain that. No, you know, I, we, haven't, we haven't figured out how we're going to do this. So, you know, given given that we're going to have all these costs, I mean, should should we be looking at like the scams get paid out of the the South Deerfield fire um, no. taxes or what is no, that? No, they get so they get paid out of three places: Sunderland, Wheatley, and Deerfield. All oh, okay. paid into. <laughs> I see. So it's a cost and we for each and we 
and we pay for ours right now out of free cash at the end of the year. Oh, okay. Which right. is what kill which is what's gonna kill our free cash yeah. this year. That's okay. the caveat everybody needs to know. I mean, it's always been paid that way. I, I think, you know, if we change how we pay for it, if we bring it in under the budget process, then you know it's a major, major thought on how we're gonna be able to fund it. So mm -hmm. Because it's not within the levy limit. So when Carolyn says bring it into the regular budget process, you mean the levy limit, right, Carolyn? Yeah, that means a proposition two and a half overwrite. It's a structural change on how we've been paying for it. Right. Okay. It's always been paid for by free cash. Yeah. Well, <coughs> so this is you know, a service uh, uh, three towns. Prior to that, we did pay for it out of. Uh, part of the budget yeah. when it was strictly well, yeah. tied to field. Now it's an enterprise fund. And the dollars were not significantly different. Right. It was the same dollars. It was, I mean, but SCEMS has been around for more than 10 years. So, you know, it's been, at least in the last 10 years, it's been paid for by free cash. I will stand to be corrected. Okay. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, all right, so I guess I'll, I'll I'll pass over these three for now, and then just move over to senior housing. Uh, so it looks like we have a ad hoc senior housing committee request in I, for what? Like yes, this is um, this will be for, paid for by CPC funds if it's approved at town meeting, and this is to finish up the site feasibility. Uh, this and that would include site delineations for the whole campus, um, core core borings for you know geothermal system for the entire campus. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that will be valuable to the entire campus, uh, uh, communal parking design, that kind of thing. Um, the the catch here is that this is the next process step to um, how we are able to get funding, nonprofit funding. So this will be the final step. And it will also include siting of three different sites, different options of where to put the housing on the campus. All right. Okay, and then uh, looks like the last one that we have here is the town common rehab. Which jumps significantly. Yeah, that's a little bit of a bigger number there. Yeah, hold your breath, people. Um, so the reason that this has jumped so much is because of Sugarloaf and Park Street being state roads, we are required to do certain things to identify the crossings, how we rehab the common, and the connections so there's also a permitting process it takes a while um when i when we initially talked to the engineer he wasn't sure what it was going to be until he went back and, and did some research with the state engineer down in district two so he gave me a rough estimate of an additional four hundred and eighty thousand dollars on top of the 350 we've already appropriated um i made a side suggestion to the board that they consider using PARPA funds for that, but we don't know. Um, we don't know for sure what that is, what that's going to look like. So that's why you're seeing that estimate and the back and forth between me and the engineer. All right. Yes. This project is taking on a life of its own. It <laughs> is. I'm so and sorry. Increases, and it increases by five hundred thousand every time we turn around. <laughs> and we're and we're you know you're pushing a million dollars for what a sixth of an acre, an eighth yeah. of an well, acre. That's, that's what I'm why, wondering for for a seating space. Yeah. Why can't we um, lean on the state to just discontinue park? Well, we could, so the board's talked about that with the state. Um, one of the major issues is if we were to take over that road, which they would be willing to give us at least Park Street, um, the concern is what's the infrastructure 
and knowing that it's going to need repairs, there's seems to be consensus um, on the part of the board and those of us that are department heads that see this as an ex a pretty huge expense if it's not fixed first. So we asked DOT about that and they weren't willing to fix the true infrastructure, stormwater and the other connections, but they're willing to talk about it and they may be willing to give us some money toward it. We also talked about a portion of Sugarloaf Street and not all of Sugarloaf Street. Right. So if we took over those two sections, it might change how we do this. It's just, it's it's a process with DOT as well. Yeah, I mean it. <clears throat> Four years ago, we started meeting <clears throat> with them and they said, you support this, the transportation bond bill, and then we'll put money in there for you. They We did, and there was money in there. So what did they end up doing? They just did a, you know, beautification little pavement along Sugarloaf. That was not what we agreed to. We agreed to upgrading all the infrastructure. And as the select board, we cannot take on the liability of, you know, 1920s, 1940s infrastructure and expect taxpayers to pay for it. So, I mean, we can't even already afford capital improvements like sidewalks. How can yeah. we find <laughs> crappy, more crappy sidewalks and <clears throat> infrastructure that would cost millions? And we brought up the fact that there is already failure and you know they're like new news to them. So we are meeting with them, mm -hmm. trying to get that sorted out. Mm -hmm. And you know, Casey will attest, oh, they didn't realize that there was any infrastructure even to worry about, which is again fairly bogus. <laughs> Yeah. What she said. <clears throat> well, I don't know. You get it's kind of discouraging, but in the on the on the positive side, we have a lovely, you know, new regional director. Region two has a new director, so maybe you know, and she seems willing to work with us. It's just trying to get everybody else together down there. It's really hard. All right. Um, well, it sounds like we've got a bunch of fun stuff to talk about over the next couple of weeks here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, do we have a a motion to adjourn? So bad. Yeah. Before, <laughs> before you do that, I've got an apology to make. Uh, minutes for the last two meetings uh, are no longer available. I can't find them. And then... Uh, I got them someplace, but I, well, I don't know where they've got. So I apologize for that. Skip's going to keep looking. Well, yeah, we uh, made an effort to Pat look to see if there was anything online. The meetings haven't been, are not online. Mm -hmm. Well, we've, I don't know whether this has been video. Yes, this has been recorded. The last two were not. Okay. And so we even talked with John. Uh, and John looked, and he can't find that they were ever recorded, too. So the minutes will not be forthcoming for the last two meetings. So I apologize for that. Now you can go to adjourn. I was probably back. So moved. September, <laughs> December. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So Carol, everybody. Everybody said, uh, oh, yeah, we have to do roll call since yeah, we're high grade. All right, so right. Carolyn right. Shores, Ness. Yes. Denise Mason. Yes. So it is, yes. Ken Cudbeck. Yes. yes. Skip Olmstead. Yes. Chuck Shattuck. Yes. Mark Brennan. Yes. All right. Passes. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.